Imagine a drug that makes hair grow on bald places. I'm talking about the new drug PP405. This drug is not just regrowing new hairs, but it is also using a mechanism that is completely new. Which means that for you non-responders to finasteride, dutasteride, or IU584 and so on, this might be just for you. Before I get into the details, let's take a look at the company behind it. Village Pharmaceuticals is a clinical stage regenerative medicine company. They are focused on developing novel treatments for hair loss, including androgenic alopecia and chemotherapy-induced alopecia. Their work is grounded in molecular and stem cell biology, aiming to create innovative solutions that reactivate dormant hair follicle stem cells. EP405 is their lead program and it is currently in its clinical trials. The company has secured significant funding, which is definitely a testament to the confidence the medical and investment communities have in their research. Village Pharmaceuticals has a pretty strong backing in their projects. They have secured a total of 16.75 million in Series A financing. This substantial investment definitely reflects the confidence that the investment community has in the potential of PP405 and the other treatments in Filage pipelines. And these funds are being used to accelerate the clinical development of drugs like PP405, pushing them through the necessary trial phases with the hope of bringing this treatment to the market and to us. The strong financial backing from such a high-profile investor is a testament to the promising potential of PP405. So with all that gibberish financial stuff said, what exactly is PP405? It is a new, non-invasive, topical treatment, just like all the others, developed to treat androgenic alopecia, aka male pattern baldness. What makes PP405 stand out is its unique mechanism of action, which is that unlike other treatments that primarily target DHT, you know, the big bad hair loss bug, PP405 focuses on reactivating dormant hair follicle stem cells. The idea here is that many people with androgenic alopecia still have hair follicles that are capable of growing hair, but these follicles are stuck in a somewhat dormant loop or phase. PP405 aims to wake these follicles up and push them back into the growth phase, which then is going to lead to new hairs growing again in that area. This is a very interesting approach to hair loss, especially when we consider the community that definitely doesn't believe that you can regenerate hair that are already dormant. So personally, I'm definitely looking forward to more research on this field. Now that we know the financial stuff and what PP405 is, how does it actually work? It is a bit complex, but I'll try and break it down so it's hopefully a bit easy to follow. First, to understand PP405, we need to know a little bit about how hair growth works. Hair grows in cycles, as we talked about in earlier videos, with each hair follicle going to three main phases, the anagen phase, the growth phase, or whatever we call it, the catagen phase, the transitional phase, can we also call it, and the telogen phase, the resting phase. In people with androgenic alopecia, many, a lot of hair follicles enter the telogen phase and just stay dormant, leading to thinning hair and baldness and so on. The challenge has always been to find a way to reactivate these dormant hair follicles and to get them back into the anagen phase where they once again can grow new healthy hairs for us. This is usually where we see WNT activators like minoxidil or other stuff like microneedling play a role in how people are trying to get their hair back. But in this case, this is where PP405 makes a different approach. The key to PP405's mechanism of action lies in how it actually interacts with cellular metabolism, specifically targeting a really important component in our cells called the mitochondrial pyruvate carrier or MPC. First off, let's talk about mitochondria. They're responsible for producing energy in a form of a molecule called ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate. Yeah, I was, I was a bit rusty on that part. 
which cells use to carry out their functions. For mitochondria to produce ATP, they need fuel. And one of these primary fuels they use is a molecule called pyruvate. Pyruvate is generated from glycose through a process known as glycolysis, which then takes place in the cell cytoplasm outside of the mitochondria. Once pyruvate is produced, it needs to be transported into the mitochondria where it can be used in the Krebs cycle, also known as the citric acid cycle, to produce ATP. This transportation is where the mitochondrial pyruvate carrier, the MPC, comes into play. The MPC is a protein complex embedded in the inner membrane of the mitochondria, and its job is only to shuttle pyruvate from the cytoplasm, which is the outside, into the mitochondria. The next thing is the inhibition of MPC by PP405. PP405 works by inhibiting the function of the MPC. When PP405 is applied topically to the scalp, it interferes with the ability of the MPC to transport the pyruvate into the mitochondria. This might sound super counterintuitive because mitochondria needs pyruvate to produce energy. However, this inhibition is targeted and localized, and here is where it gets interesting. When the transportation of pyruvate into the mitochondria is blocked by PP405, the levels of pyruvate in the cytoplasm, which is the outside, starts to rise. The cell then needs to manage this excess of pyruvate somehow, just like testosterone into estrogen and so on. And one way it does this is by converting pyruvate into lactate through the action of an enzyme called lactate dehydrogenase, LDH, I think it's also called. Most of you guys who are using gear or any kinds of anabolics already know this problem. Like when you use too much testosterone, the body is trying to regulate, you'll convert it into estrogen, and it's the exact same problem we see here. Although here it's not a problem. Because PP405 has been shown to increase the activity of LDH in hair follicle stem cells, and this increase in LDH activity leads to higher levels of lactate. Now, here's the crucial part. This buildup of lactate seems to play a key role in reactivating dormant hair follicle stem cells. The exact mechanism is still being studied, but the presence apparently of lactate is thought to trigger a signaling cascade that just prompts these dormant cells to re-enter the anagen, which is the growth phase, and stay there apparently. Now, once the hair follicle stem cells are reactivated, they then start to proliferate, leading to the formation of new hair. This process effectively pushes the hair follicles back into the growth phase or anagen phase, whatever you prefer, where, as we just said, they can produce new healthy hair. One of the critical aspects of PP405's design is that it acts locally on the scalp. The phase one trial shows that there was no systemic absorption of the drug into the bloodstream, which means it is less likely to cause side effects elsewhere in the body. This localized action is crucial because while PP405 is inhibiting MPC in the hair follicles, it is not affecting the rest of the body cells, which still need their mitochondria to function normally. If you don't know this, without mitochondria, you would die. Phelage Pharmaceutical has already completed phase 1 clinical trials for PP405, and the results are quite promising. Over a seven-day period, the treatment was found to be safe and well-tolerated with no significant side effects. As I just said before, there was absolutely no detectable systemic absorption of the drug, which means that it stays localized on the scalp, reducing the risk of side effects elsewhere in the body. The trials showed a statistically significant activation of hair follicle stem cells. This is a strong indicator that PP405 has the potential to stimulate new hair growth. Now, the treatment is moving into phase 2 trials, which should be done around Christmas this year, where it will be tested on larger groups of participants, including both men and women. I believe it is 70 in total. 
These trials will focus on optimizing the dosing regimen and further evaluate the treatment's efficacy. As always, I'll keep you updated as more information becomes available. And in the meantime, if you want to know more about how this drug works, make sure to hit me up in the comment section. I have been considering to do a detailed video on how this drug works. But once again, I'm trying to keep it simple for everybody so everybody gets something out of these videos and I just don't bombard people with useless information that has no potential value to most of my viewers. And other than that, check out my other videos if you want to know more about hair loss and I'll see you in the next video.